Hi, I wanted to quickly review um, the uh, material that we discussed in class related to the prefrontal cortex and obsessive compulsive disorder. So first you should remember the two areas of the prefrontal cortex, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and orbital frontal cortex and their different roles um, in general in terms of turning on or turning off behaviors. Um, although the orbital frontal cortex, as we discussed, is um, fairly complicated and um, even though big scale damage that completely destroys it or destroys large chunks of it will cause impulsivity, um, s more subtle changes to the orbital frontal cortex um, can cause difficulty breaking habits um, or excessive worry or a little bit of both, um, which are actually what we see in OCD. Um, you should know where these are, and even though I always refer to it as the orbital frontal cortex, um, unfortunately the area has a lot of different names. Um, then uh, in terms of what the orbital frontal cortex does, um, when, uh, so we didn't really go into the data behind this, but when somebody is not doing very much, just kind of at rest, hanging out, uh, the orbital co cortex is somewhat active, and this is um, suppressing inappropriate behaviors. Um, and in the people with obsessive compulsive disorder, we actually find the orbital frontal cortex is more active when the person is just sitting around resting. And this is associated with the sort of worrying function of the orbital frontal cortex. Um, uh, in a healthy person, the orbital frontal cortex increases its activity um, even more um, uh, compared to the sort of baseline suppression of inappropriate behaviors when somebody needs to turn, switch to a new task. So it's sort of like stopping what you're doing, switching to a new task kind of world. Um, and um, what the Chamberlain paper found is that OCD patients seem to have this sort of task switching ability, this uh, uh, increased activity during task switching doesn't seem to happen uh, in their brains, which means that they can't sort of suppress these habits, these habitual um, compulsive behaviors. Um, so the question that the Chamberlain paper was asking is what is the orbital frontal cortex doing during task switching in patients with OCD? Um, so they had a comparison, they didn't really give people OCD, but instead they just compared people with OCD versus controls. Um, there were some relatives in there as well, which we'll heard talk about uh, again uh, later on. Um, but what they looked at was um, uh, measuring the activity, the brain activity in the orbital frontal cortex. The specific way they did that was something called functional magnetic res resonance imaging, or fMRI. Um, this is sort of uh, uh, become a very standard technique in um, uh, scanning a person's brain without putting a hole in somebody's brain, being able to record the activity of neurons. Um, there are some technical caveats to it that we're not going to worry about. Um, and so they had a few possible results that they could have had um, in sort of this general question. Um, and what the actual result was is that the orbital frontal cortex was less active during, I, I made a mistake here in the original class, and thankfully a couple of people corrected me, the orbital frontal cortex is less active during the task than in OCD patients as compared to controls. And so um, some of this OCD symptoms result from too little activity in the orbital frontal cortex. And again, what that means is the, uh, the orbital frontal cortex, one of its jobs is to suppress these urges, um, suppress um, these habits, and that urge can't be suppressed in somebody with obsessive compulsive disorder.